Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Sabbath to all of you. I can hear Leroy Bennett, and I see his beautiful wife here today. We're glad you're here all the way from, from where? Nurk. How many of you know where Nurk is? Hey, could you, could you, how, what's the real pronunciation for Nurk? Isn't it Newark? Man, I, I'm having a hard time with that, but I, you guys know where Nurk is, right? Jim, do you know where Nurk is? Oh, not. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, and this is what I'd like you to take right out of your possession. I know there's one person in your family that, that reports to each of you and tells you all what's happening on. Well, how about you taking responsibility today, get, getting a bulletin, we make plenty of them for you, and then you look at here, circle, write names, do all those beautiful things that you can, you can be a part of the family of the Worthington Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now help me out here. What are the three letters, excuse me, yes, the three numbers that tell where we are here on Granville Road? What are they? 385 East Dublin Granville Road. Now, while I'm speaking to you today in this quick moment, there are in front of you some things that we'd like you to pull out. Some of you have not yet said, I want to transfer my membership here. You haven't done that yet. You need to. Some of you haven't been baptized yet, and you need to get that you need to write that. Some of you have changed your phone numbers or your emails or some of you have given us information trying to falsify where you really live so we can't find you. Okay, so write some things down here that we can get to you and uh, we want to give information, disseminate these things. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put my glasses on. By the way, this is live streamed, so uh, if you get too close to the camera here, you'll be seen. So. That's why some of you are sitting in the back here. Hello, everybody. I was told the Hatches, I would say hello to them, and the Wallaces, and many others, and, and uh, uh, the Coos and others. Hello, good to see you guys. All right. Uh, top of the list says Rose Abbott. We uh, celebrated Bruce's life on Thursday, and uh, we love the Abbott family, and we, uh, during this time, we're especially praying uh, for that Rose is by herself at the Emeritus. How many of you know where the Emeritus is? Come on, raise your hands. Please take a friend over there. It's right across the street from the golf, the little miniature golf course there, right by St. Anne's. And you can see Bonnie Abbott's mommy there too, Josie Ribbon. They're in our books. Get that church directory, go see these people. Tom Esman, we're continuing our prayers for your healing and health. And uh, Gail Wampa is recovering in Friendship Village. Also in Friendship Village is Marquita Gilson's father. And we definitely would like to keep them in our prayers. Folks, on Tuesday at 11 o'clock, write this down because we didn't get it until last night. It's not Sarah's fault on this one. They didn't give me the information. 11 o'clock a.m., the funeral for Rob Rice. Sorry if you had to hear this. 51 years old. On Sunday night, he suffered a massive heart attack and went to sleep in the Lord. And I just completed doing his wedding less than three months ago, you guys. Rob is a healthy, happy guy. He'd been to our church here even a few times with his, his girlfriend at that time and loved it. Rob Rice is a dear friend of our family here. 11 o'clock at Xenos. That's where his wife attended. Very good Christian lady. And I will be there saying a few things as well on behalf of uh, Rob and his family here. So 11 o'clock is over by Home Depot of Cleveland over there. Okay, Xenos community of Cleveland. Anyway, I'm sorry I'd have to tell you that, but write that down. If you can come out at 11 o'clock at Xenos, I'd appreciate you considering that. Okay, we have several announcements that I'm not... My grade point average was not quite high enough, and so the board decided to actually have the person who has really high GPAs come up. So I'm going to invite Kevin first, because his was even higher than Dan's, to give a, <laughs> should I not say that? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's take that off of the screen. Or Kevin Shuley, our head deacon, please speak with us. Yes, please expunge that from the record. My GPA was not high at all, but I did make it. Um, I'm here to announce the uh, fall festival tonight. Um, I'm, I'm hoping everybody knows, but just in case you don't, 
Um, our fall festival uh, put on by the Worthington Youth Ministries is tonight, 6.30 to 8.30 in the gymnasium. Um, I promise you it's going to be a good time. Uh, if you haven't been, please come. If you have been, the Mystic Mile is there. It's brand new. Come and see it. I'm going to leave you with a quick video. So, you say that you want to know what's going on at the Fall Fest? Well, come on in and take a look. Lots and lots to do at the Fall Fest, including the Bounce House. <laughs> the costume. And ending with the family photo. The kids are excited and they're ready and it's going to be great. Dan Thorward, another person that this time we don't have to expunge the record from the GPA and uh, we, we're going to hear from this. This is a great announcement. I hope that you'll write this down because it's going to be something that will further in our, in our future, the great ministry we do in health. All right. Well, I don't have my typical hat on today. Today is my Ohio State hat, not my church board chairman hat or my elder hat or health ministries director. Today it's Ohio State. Um, those of you that live in Columbus and commute up 315 realize that there is a new addition to the Ohio State Medical Center. It's a 21-floor hospital, just over a million square feet, about a billion two to build. Um, this hospital will be the newest, most technologically advanced cancer hospital in the country, if not the world. Um, and I would like to invite you all to come see it. We're going to have a community open house, um, which is the uh, 9th of November, November the 9th, from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, there's a poster, a couple of them out on the back wall back there with the URL, the website you can visit to find out more information. But I would encourage you to come down. Uh, we have 12 new operating rooms that we're opening up, a linear accelerator. Uh, which is brand new, um, three floors of intensive care. I would love for you to come down and see where, uh, where we work. I have, I think, the best job at Ohio State. Some people think it's Urban Meyer, but it's not. I have the best job at Ohio State. I get to manage intensive care for all of the James Cancer Hospital, medical intensive care, surgical intensive care, and neuro intensive care. So please come down. I'd be happy to give you a tour. 1 to 4 o'clock, November the 9th, free parking. It's an open house for the whole community to come and see this new billion-dollar hospital, uh, one of the biggest hospitals in the country that will be open to the community, uh, and a chance to see it before patients come in. So please put that on your calendar. You can email me if you have questions. I'd be happy to see you and give you a tour, especially of intensive care. So hopefully uh, we'll see you there. The pastors will be there, I hope, as they come down and visit patients there all the time. So thank you all. Happy Sabbath. Man, I was down there, and Dan is running the show down there. He speaks Spanish, and they all know you, Dan, and, and uh, we're proud that, that uh, we can represent uh, what, what we do here. Folks, uh, just a couple of things that besides 11 o'clock, some of you just came in. I've got to say it's 11 o'clock Tuesday, the funeral services for Rob Rice at Xenos, 11 o'clock. Please make sure you do that. Uh, Julian and I, on behalf of of the Conference of Ohio, 7th Avenue. Next week, there will be filled at this time all over the conference, people come from, from all over the place. So come early, come sit forward. And uh, if you want to not have that huge group, come to the first service because the first service next week will be the second service normally. Figure that one out. Call me on the phone if you can't get it. So we will be having church. We will be having uh, just a few Sabbath schools, but I'd like you to know that it's going to be big. If Carmi's asked for some help, and I'm going to ask you this. This is from Julian and me, okay? Please come to church and shake hands with young people 
and welcome them in. We don't, you don't have to be a deacon or a deaconess or an elder or elders. You just need to come and say, I go to this church at Worthington and I would like to tell you young people, thanks for coming here. Oh, we won't have any Seventh-day Adventists left if we don't. The average age of a Seventh-day Adventist is 57 because everybody's fighting over theology. So let's get over here and show some love to people. 57 years old, average age of an Adventist, there's something wrong with that, okay? So when we see young people, wouldn't it be nice to see someone that's 57 or older shaking a hand saying thanks for being here rather than criticizing something? We are known for loving people. And I know they call it the social gospel and they call it the compr creeping compromise. Folks, we love God. There's no need to apologize for loving the Lord. The Seventh-day Adventist should lead the way in that. And as the remnant believers, we should know that people will know us by our love more than anything else. So next week, next week, please come and shake hands and love people. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Okay, that, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Sign languages today. But the reason why we're not having... Well, my kids will not be at sign language is because the Pathfinders Adventures are going to Hawking Hills to hike. Wouldn't that be fun? And we're inviting all of you to come and hike with us. How many of you are going to go today to Hawking Hills hiking? Okay, four people. Awesome, awesome. Oh, no. Come on out. Let's show. Yulian was hiking there a couple weeks ago, weren't you, Yulian? This is Mimi is beautiful there, wasn't it? Two weeks ago. So let's come out and do that. Now, Carolyn is going to play our signature song. And our signature song, this, we're going to try to put the screen on, okay? But if you want to come up and wave at somebody during the signature song, something we're trying new today. If you want to come up and say, hi, mom, hi, dad, come right up here, and then the camera will catch you. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Let's stand, members, and let's we'll sing it a couple of days. If you want to come up and wave to the camera of somebody, you can do that too. Ready? I'm so glad. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I am washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. I am part. Let's stay standing up, stay standing up. We're going to sing number 25. Brother Bob Bradley is here with us. Praise the Lord, number 25. Praise the Lord, His glories show. Let's sing together this beautiful hymn. Everybody together with me. Praise the Lord in glory show. Alleluia. Saints spread in his heart below. Alleluia. Angels round his Stanza. Earth to heaven and heaven to earth. Alleluia. Tell his wonder, sing his word. Alleluia. Age to age. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last stanza. 
in the Bible times, people always like to talk about their roots and what happened way back. And sometimes they don't know because they didn't understand where the classes that, uh, that they had were different. And people stood and the speakers sat. Now that's a difference. Today we have the, the people sit and the speakers stand. I'm not going to sit down today, but I'm going to stand with you during this particular prayer. And I'm going to ask for somebody or somebody, just for a few moments, to be able to say aloud something that's on their heart. And I want to tell you why I'm going to do this, especially today. We had a lot of people go to sleep in the Lord this week. And you know what? I'm happy that they're in the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I'm still sad because I have to remain, those that remain on earth have to keep on waiting. And we have to have renewed strength and courage. And this is why we're together standing. I see the young people here in our great school. And I see you and his wife. I know that uh, my wife and the other the leaders of Pathfinder Adventures, we're trying to do as much as we can. So let this prayer be one that lasts a long time. I'm going to start out right where you're at. I'm going to say something, and then if someone would just raise their hand and, and just say something about like this. I'm grateful that I'm a part of the families that had to go through the struggling so I could be there with them. Anyone else? Yes, Joyce? Amen. Anyone else today? Sure. Yes, Leroy. Leroy's mom is is getting a little better. She's not getting better. She's not with us today. And then we need to pray for his mommy, who comes to first service usually. Thank you for sharing that. Now I need to call her again. Marjorie Bennett. This is how this is what our family is about. I'm going to pray for the Rob Rice's family today. Wanda. Okay. Anyone else today? Yes, Pam Eutheris, our, our teacher, our illustrious teachers. Oh, yes. I'm just grateful to be part of the Wah family at school and the Worship Adventist Church. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pam. Anyone from the balcony represented today? Besides that beautiful voice that I'm hearing. Anyone up there? Dan, what are you thankful? Oh, yeah, Kayleen. Kaylee, thank you. We love you and we love your family. We're glad that you joined our church here. We're not ever letting you go. That's the sad thing about that. Anyone else today? Julian Filipovo. I'm thankful to God for the opportunity to worship my country. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn, are you thankful for something that you could say to us today, our fearless leader, elder? I'm thankful that God sustains us every day. Thank you. Amen. One Mimi. Yes. Yes, the, our school. And finally, I save this just to say before prayer. You know, I'm thankful for forgiveness. So, the very first book of the Bible is named what? Genesis. It means beginning, folks. Let let every Sabbath be a beginning to a new life in Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this group of people. We thank you for forgiveness. We're thankful for all the, the, the things that people said. There are, there are hearts that are in each room that are different positions and different journeys. We don't know who that is. That's because we're human beings. We don't know that. But we know those, those texts that say, create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. That is wonderful. So today, as we're here, and we see the young people, and we hear a message of hope, and sing songs of praise, and we go hiking in nature, and we have programs tonight and celebrate the beautiful seasons. And I know some people, they don't like certain seasons. It reminds them of something that's not so positive. But to those that do like that, and for the next one, may the season that's just right come when you come and have your program forever and ever and ever. Amen. May be seated. Thank you for sharing that little exercise with us today. It's nice to have congregational praise.
not just the pastor, not just the choir or the music, which we enjoy, but having you be a part of it too. Thank you, Leroy, for sharing that. And there are many people in our, our congregation I would like to before the, the deacons are going to be coming up. In fact, why don't you have the deacons come up right now um, for our offering. These are the junior deacons. Definitely these are the junior deacons, especially this one over here. I'll always be a junior deacon because my, I'm Robert Lewis McGee Jr., so I always feel good about that. Uh, I received an email this week. I mean, received many emails. One especially that came from someone that I, I have a lot of respect for. And it, it concerned that of, uh, of taking care of people. And what a privilege it is to take care of people. And I, I think sometimes that uh, we forget that the scripture says those of us that are strong must bear those that are weak. So that is an amen, isn't it, Bob? Because that's, that's an amen. Some of us are strong in a different area, but we bear those. I mean, some of you are computer people, and some of us, us are not. Johnny Chua is basically, whenever I have a problem, I'm going to give you his number. No, I'm just kidding. And <laughs> he always helps me. And even when I call him really late or early in the morning, he helps me. And I don't, I'm just very grateful. But when the offering is received today, may, may you know that your money is, is going to try to help the minds of all kinds of different styles and thinkers of people. There are those people that are working very hard jobs physically. And there's people working very hard jobs mentally. And then there's people like me that work in a social environment, which is sometimes delicate, to say the least. I had to take myself off all social networks. It was very difficult for me because I enjoy social networks, but now I can't be on it anymore. Isn't that sad? Come on, somebody say, that's sad, Bob. I love people, but I can't be on them anymore because people say stuff like this. I'll say, it's a beautiful day in Worthington. And then there's 200 comments about global warming after that. <laughs> or I'll say, isn't the Lord good? Are you talking, which Lord are you talking about? <laughs> or how say happy Sabbath? And they'll say, it's Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or if I say, I'm going to speak here, go here. How come you didn't call me? Are we not friends anymore? Or hey, Bob, there's this girl that's on your neck. Could you introduce me to them? And I think, oh, no. So I can't be on social network because everybody wants to argue political and they want to argue religious things. So today, isn't it nice that we can step aside from the political realm? We can step aside from all our arguments and say, I'm going to give to the all-knowing wise God. Amen and amen. Lord, bless this offering. Bless these children that are growing up every day. They're just, if we had a height chart on them, by the, they're just going up, 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 up. Bless their families, their moms and their dads. Be with the people. Maybe they're living with a guardian. Maybe they're living with their grandparents. Wherever they're living, give the strength and hope to the family, the nuclear family that they're in. When we see grandparents here and aunts and uncles and, and even neighbors, we're thankful for them because it does take a whole tribe and a village to raise the family we're in. I'm grateful for my son's friends and, and their family. And as we heard the people already in the request, may this offering be a great offering, one for, for your name, honor, and glory for all time, forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Well, that was a good one, right? Yeah. Well, thank you, Bob. I'll take it from here. I appreciate it. Saints, uh, welcome around the table of the Word of God. Nothing happens. Okay, uh, I would like to say Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, okay. Uh, good morning, Saints. And let's try it again. Good morning, sinners. Good. Uh, so, for those of you who are new with us here, I just would like to let you know what we are doing. We are studying verse by verse the book of Acts. And I've, started, and I've titled this uh, study of the book of Acts, People of the Way. And some people may wonder why did I call this series by the title People of the Way. For those of you who have paid attention when you read the book of Acts, you'll notice that the early Christians didn't call themselves Christians. They actually refer to themselves as people of the way because they believed that in Jesus Christ they have found the way that uh, the Old Testament prophets prophesied of salvation. So today we continue our study of the book of Acts and today we are going to study one of those stories about which my wife uh, usually will tell me, you're not gonna preach about that, are you? And that usually means, please don't preach about that. So, but I cannot help you today because uh, what I'm gonna preach today is really a scary story in the book of Acts. Don't worry about the children, it's PG-13, it's fine. Uh, but it's a scary story for adults. And as uh, we study this story, uh, I'm going to rock your boat. And uh, maybe when I go home, my wife is going to rock my boat, because she told me not to preach about this. But uh, here we are, and we'll let the Spirit of God lead, so I just would like to say a prayer. Father, would you please lead us in this difficult topic of study? Help us to grasp it and to respond with a whole heart. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we invite you to be here and to minister to us through your word. And everybody said together, Amen. Please open your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 4. And as you are finding your way uh, to the book of Acts, I would like to put on the screen my title, of the sermon today and I've titled this sermon a Barnabas or a barnacle on the ship of God and many of you may have heard of Barnabas but probably some are wondering what is with the barnacles well barnacles are shelf uh, uh, shellfish they are related to shrimps, to crabs. But they have uh, something unique about them. Barnacles are sort of parasites. Because they don't swim for themselves, they usually prefer to attach themselves to someone else or something else that swims. And they are getting a free ride. They are free loaders, they are moochers if you wish. And barnacles are notorious for plaguing not just uh, marine animals, but especially ships. And when barnacles start accumulating, they always attract other barnacles. You don't see just one barnacle on, a, on the uh, hull of a ship. They usually attract more, till the whole uh, ship uh, in, the, in the bottom, under the water line, is covered by barnacles. And what this does to the ship slows down the ship. You don't see the barnacles because they are under the water line. But you can guess that there is an infestation 
with barnacles because the ship cannot travel as fast and the oil consumption, the uh, fuel consumption skyrocks. As a matter of fact, at some cases where the ships are infestated with uh, barnacles, the consumption of fuel can uh, go up by 40%. US Navy spends additionally half a billion dollars every year just on fuel, additional fuel, because of barnacles and because they have to uh, dock the ships and clean them from this uh, uh, shellfish. But as you can guess, I'm not concerned so much with the spending of the US Navy. I'm going to talk here about the spiritual matter. And I'm going to talk about spiritual barnacles. I'm going to talk about uh, barnacles that slow down the ship of God. And as you already in uh, chapter 4 of the book of Acts, I would like to invite someone to lift up her or his hand and to volunteer for us to read Acts chapter 4 verses 31 through 37. And if you already feel that the Holy Spirit is giving you a nudge, don't uh, hesitate to lift up your hand. I see already uh, our head deacon, uh, Kevin. Get it with the microphone. We have Mar uh, March. Hey, thank you, Margie. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Thank you, March. I don't know if you realize, but what we get here in these verses is a snapshot of a church that is successful, of a church that is blessed, of a ship that is traveling full speed ahead. Here we have a community of people whose hearts have been transformed, revolutionized by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And before we continue, I have a question for you. Here it is. If you had been invited to join this community of early Christians, what would your reaction have been? And I have three options for you, so please uh, choose one of them. And don't tell anybody else. We don't, want you to, uh, we don't want to know in the beginning of the sermon if you are Barnacle or uh, Barnabas. So here they, here they are. They invite you to join this uh, early uh, New Testament church. And you say, huh, that sounds too much like communism. What's mine is mine. I'm not giving this to anybody else. Uh, the second option, this early church is too cultish to my taste. I will keep away from these weirdos, living together, having everything in common, uh, not for me. And the third option, this sounds like heaven. Where do I sign up? So did you make your pick? Oh, keep it. Keep it to yourself. And I am praying inside of uh, my heart that God may speak to you today as we study this topic. Did you pay attention to what happened in verse 31? As the apostles and the disciples were praying, the Holy Spirit was poured out on them 
And not just the house was shaken, the building where they were praying was shaken, but there was a heart quake. Their hearts were shaken and transformed. And verse 32 tells us what was the result of the transformation of their hearts. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were filled with generosity. Friends, generosity, true generosity is supernatural. True generosity is a response to a heart that is filled with the Holy Spirit. And something else happened as a result of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit fell on their hearts, they fell in love with people and fell out of love with possessions. This is a clear sign that the Holy Spirit is working. This is a clear sign that the ship, the church, is on the right course and is traveling full speed ahead. What was happening in the early church? Thousands of people were getting baptized. And as they were getting baptized, these people, these very people, many of them were expelled from their synagogues. Families disowned them. And these people, especially if they were women, they were left without any sustenance. There was a huge financial need in the early church. And when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples and they were praying, he shook not just the house, he shook not just their hearts, he shook also their wallets. And some of you would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, you don't know what you're asking for. Because every single time the Holy Spirit comes, He touches the most sensitive nerve of the human nervous system. Do you know what is this nerve? It's the pocket nerve. Every single time the Holy Spirit comes, He asks you to change your values. And the values of heaven are people first, things somewhere there in the line, but people come first. If you are filled with the presence of God, with the presence of the Holy Spirit, you're going to value the things that He values. And the, uh, the Bible tells us that heaven values people. Heaven values people so much that our Savior died for us. Heaven gave the best that can possibly be given to humanity. Because heaven values people first. So, the first New Testament church was investing in people. Today we have beautiful churches and I appreciate that. But are we investing in building beautiful people? The New Testament church was investing in building up people. Oftentimes we are more concerned with mortar and bricks than with souls. And I'm telling you, if the Holy Spirit were to come in our church, the priorities will change. Because according to the report of our treasurer of the uh, last two years, we spent around 2% of everything that comes in, in this church, for outreach and for reaching out to these people who do not know Jesus yet. Yes, we are doing financially okay, and yes, we have to uh, keep our buildings, yes, we have to preserve the sanctuary, yes, we have to pay for the utilities so that we can worship here. But I know that when the Holy Spirit comes, he changes the priority of churches. And they start valuing people more than bricks and mortar. Help us 
as a church to be able to value more than bricks and mortar. And then in verse 37, an example is given of generosity. An example is given of what happens to a person when the Holy Spirit takes possession of the heart. And this guy, uh, his name is Joseph. Some translations say Joseph. And Joseph was so permeated by the presence of the Spirit. He was so generous that when he heard about the need of his brothers and sisters in his church, he sold his property. And the Bible says that he was a Levite. That means he was used someone else to bring things at his feet. Now he brought possession, he brought his real estate in the feet of fishermen. Because he understood that the church has changed its building and the leadership has changed its presence. That not anymore the people in the temple were the ones to whom the tithes and the offerings belong, but to the New Testament church. And the apostles were so impressed with Joseph that they actually changed his name. The Bible tells us that all who are going to be saved are going to receive new names in heaven. But he was transformed even here on earth, so he didn't have to wait till we get there. He got his new name here on earth. And his new name was Barnabas. Our Bible tells us that uh, every single time we encounter Barnabas in the New Testament and especially in the book of Acts, he's helping someone. He's either mending some broken heart or giving his money for some broke person, but he was always helping someone. Or he was befriending someone that no, nobody else wanted to befriend with. Friends, this is what happens to someone who has been touched by the Holy Spirit. You walk around and you see in this world broke people and you're willing to dip in your pockets. You see broken people and you're willing to put your arms around them. So Joseph was changed to Barnabas. And Barnaba is an Aramaic name, a composite name that consists of two words. The first word is Bar, which means son, son of. And the second word is Nava or Naba. Naba is uh, related to the Hebrew word Navi or Navi, Navin. And it means prophet. Literally translated, the Aramaic name Barnaba means son of a prophet. And when uh, the Bible uses this uh, uh, description, it does not mean that you are literally born as a son of a prophet. It means that you have the characteristic of a prophet. And for us Westerners and Greek influenced people, a prophet is absolutely necessary someone who foretells the future. Yet I challenge you to read carefully most of the Old Testament books, prophetic books, not just Daniel, the other books, not just Ezekiel. Read carefully uh, Jeremiah. Read carefully uh, Amos. Read carefully Joel. Yes, you'll, you'll see in this book some prophet, uh, prophecies, but the majority of the time, the prophet was someone who was defending the defenseless, the poor, Jeremiah was rebuking the rich people. Nehemiah was rebuking the rich people who are not helping the poor. The prophet in the biblical understanding is a comforter to those who need comfort. He's defender to those who are defenseless. So he was son of encouragement because and son of a prophet. Yet it's interesting that when Luke translates the name Barnabas, or Barnabas. He does not translate it son of a prophet. Do you know why? It's really interesting. Do you want to hear why? Oh boy. Only one person wants to hear it. Only Roy. Anyone else would like to hear why uh, Luke actually called him son of encouragement? 
Okay. Here it is. Actually, when you read it in Greek, especially if you are Greek speaking, and you read what Luke calls Barnabas, you are going to be blown away. Here it is. Luke refers to Barnabas in Greek as he was Paraklesios. And the word Paraklesios is related, it's actually the same word like Parakletos. Parakletos is the very word that Jesus uses in his Gospels to refer to the Holy Spirit. When Jesus referred, and I have given you some verses here, to the Holy Spirit, he referred to him as Parakletos. And here, Luke refers to Barnabas, translates his name in, in Greek as the son of the Holy Spirit. Because he has become people-centered, caring, giving, generous, heart-mending, like the Holy Spirit is. You see, friends, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you get transformed and you become like the Holy Spirit. And I would like to tell you something that uh, many of us would not going to like. If you want to be filled with the Spirit, I would like to tell you up front, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you precious time. It's going to cost you emotional and physical energy. And it's going to cost you even financially. Because sometimes their financial needs, you have to help those who are broken. Joseph was changed to Barnabas because he was willing to pay the price of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of us pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we don't know what we are asking for. Because if you are serious about that, you have to show the Holy Spirit even now by how you care about people, by how you dip in your pockets. We are not faithful even in the, in the small things like tithe. Tithe is a small thing, friends. God asks way more than, than that from us. He asks our whole heart, our time to minister to other people, to care about people. If we are unfaithful in the little things, how is He going to give us the treasure house of heaven? Because it costs to be filled with the Spirit. And unfortunately, many are not willing to pay the price. Now, who would like to read for us verses five uh, of chapter five, verses one through eleven? Chapter five of uh, Acts, verses five through eleven. I saw someone had a desire to read before. If you're still there, lift up uh, your hand high, so that uh, who, who are you pointing to? Uh, oh, okay. Well, I guess the mic is coming to Sarah. Okay, thank you, Sarah. But a man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold some land. He kept back part of the money for himself. His wife knew about this and agreed to it. But he brought the rest of the money and gave it to the apostles. Peter said, Ananias, why did you let Satan rule your thoughts to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep for yourself part of the money you received for the land? Before you sold the land, it belonged to you. And even after you sold it, you could have used the money any way you wanted. Why did you think of doing this? You lied to God, not to us. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. Some young men came in, wrapped up his body, carried it out and buried it, and everyone who heard about this was filled with fear. About three hours later, his wife came in, but she did not know what had happened. Peter said to her, tell me, was the money you got for your field this much? And Sapphira answered, yes, that was the price. Peter said to her, Why did you and your husband agree to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. At that moment, Sapphira fell down by his feet and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. The whole church and all the others who heard about these things were filled with fear. Thank you, sir. So this is the story that my wife didn't want me to preach about, guys. 
Are you ready to hear it or should I just wrap it up here? Okay. In chapter 4, the story of Barnabas, of transformation of life, was given. And here, if you pay attention in your Bibles, the very first verse begins, but there is a problem in the early church. And here we just heard the story of two barnacles on the ship of God. And I would like to tell you a little bit about what happened here. First, do you remember the names of these two barnacles on the ship of God? What were their names? Ananiah and Sapphira. The Hebrew name uh, in Hebrew is uh, uh, Hananiah. And it literally means Jehovah is gracious. And the, the name of uh, Sapphira in uh, Aramaic is uh, Shafira. And Shafira means beautiful. Yet there is nothing beautiful and there is nothing uh, seemingly, seemingly gracious about this couple. There is something ugly from inside out. And I would like to tell you what happened. Would you please imagine with me, let's transport ourselves mentally 2,000 years back in time. Imagine that you were in this room that was described in chapter 4, where the whole room was shaken by the presence of the Spirit. Hearts of the disciples were shaken, and Ananiah and Sapphira were there too. Their hearts and their pockets were also shaken. Because you remember, when the Holy Spirit comes, you have to become a generous person. Uh, so be careful what you're asking for. So Ananias and Sapphira's hearts and wallets were also shaken. And in the spur of the moment, they were so excited and they said, yes, we're going to respond to the call of the Holy Spirit. We hear the Holy Spirit and we feel Him elbowing us and say, come on! And Ananias and Sapphira stood up watching how everybody else was uh, uh, promising that they're going to sell their land and they saw the example of Barnabas and they said, we want to be like that. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they said, we have a large property. We're going to sell it and we're going to give the money for the advancement of the gospel so that these expelled from their home uh, families can be relieved from the physical need and go, go and preach the gospel. Good, they promised and they went, put the for sale sign on their property and it sold amazingly good. And when Ananias and Sapphira started counting this money and Sapphira said to her husband, Oh, my gracious one, do you know how many dinners in Olive Garden we can buy with this money? And then Satan was banging on their hearts. He was telling them, if you become so generous, you're going to hurt yourself. You're selling the property that will give future to your family, to your children, to your grandchildren. What are you doing? And then Ananias and Sapphira agreed. That's true. We've joined a cult. It's too much. This socialism comes a little bit too harsh on me. And they had the option to go to the apostles, or actually Apostle Peter says, you could have said, it's mine, we're not going to give it, and it'll be okay. Nobody, nobody's arm is twisted to give in the church. Do you know that if even according to the policy of the General Conference and the Seventh-day Adventist Church, if you at some point you regret that you have given anything to the church, you can go, keep your receipt, give, it, give the receipt to the church, and we are going to refund you the money. Because you're not obligated to give. Because God does not 
God wants to, uh, to get the money of people who are prompted by the Holy Spirit and they respond. So, Apostle Peter says to uh, Ananias and Sapphira, it was yours. You don't have to give it. You can keep it. So, Ananias and Sapphira, they had the option to go to the apostles and to tell them, sorry, we are not given anything. We regret our commitment to the Holy Spirit. But there is a problem. They are going to look bad in the eyes of the other disciples. See, they want to be, to be like Barnabas. They want to be highly esteemed. They want to be honored like Barnabas. But they also like their money. So, Ananias and Sapphira came with a solution. They will give portion of the money and pretend that they have given everything. They wanted to look generous like Barnabas because they love the praise of people and the acclamations and the kudos. Yet they loved money too. So they decided to deceive the early believers. They didn't want to deceive God. God knew. They knew that God knew. They wanted to deceive the early believers. Yet, do you remember what Peter said? You actually were trying to deceive the Holy Spirit. You are trying to cheat the Holy Spirit. And you know, friends, this, was the, this is the most hideous sin. The, the sin that takes God off and He cannot stand. They were not punished because they didn't give. Actually, they could have retained the money and everything would have been fine with them as, as long as uh, earthly life is concerned. They died. They were cut off of the ship because they were barnacles who were stopping the full speed of the ship. Because there is nothing that God hates more than hypocrisy. Hypocrisy destroys his image in people, in churches, everywhere where hypocrisy goes. They were fake Christians. They were trying to fake spirituality. They were trying to pretend and to give the impression to the other people that they are spiritual when they were not. Friends, it's okay for other people to think that you are more spiritual than you are. But it's not okay when you try to convince them that you are more spiritual than, than you are. The word for hypocrisy in Greek is very uh, similar to English. Hypocrites, hypocr hypocrite means someone who is judging from beneath. But I would like to take you further. I would like to take you to the origin of the Hebrew word for hypocrisy. The Hebrew word for hypocrisy, hanef, means someone who is polluted and rotten from inside. Someone who is degenerating spiritually and falling apart. Someone who stings. As a matter of fact, Peter refers to Ananias and Sapphira, to these hypocrites. He refers to them as full of Satan. Why did you let Satan fill you up? You are full with the Spirit. What happened? Why should you allow the Spirit of Satan to fill you up? And the word hanef for hypocrisy in Hebrew means someone who is absolutely distant and far, far, far away from God. Unreachable to the Spirit of God because you have emptied yourself completely of the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is going to make you uncomfortable. He's going to make you generous. He's going to make you caring. He's going to make you interrupt your schedule to take care of someone else. He's going to disturb your comfort zone. Do you know why God has included in the Ten Commandments the commandment about lying? He says in Proverbs, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are His delight. Because lying is the step that leads you to hypocrisy. The, because lying is the step that transforms you from inside in and fills you up with Satan and his presence. And you become into his own image. 
Instead of being Barnabas, instead of being son of the Holy Spirit, you become son of the devil. Friends, the first recorded burial in Christian history was that of two hypocrites. Because God is that serious about hypocrisy. And the reason why God punished them so severely is not because they were uh, worse hypocrites than us. Among us, there are some barnacles. And you say, how do you know that? I don't know uh, because I see. I don't have the inside of Peter. I don't see what's in your heart. Sometimes I have difficulties discerning also what's in mine. But I know something. When the speed of the sheep is slowed down, when we spend only 2% for for, from our uh, income for outreach because we have to cover this building, we have to uh, pay our staff, we have to uh, sustain our school. When we have only 2% left of all this uh, money uh, to do what the Holy Spirit has called us to do, to care about people, then I know that they are barnacles. Because when there are no barnacles, the sheep travels full speed. The reason why these people dropped dead was because they were fake Christians and they were trying to pretend that they are great Christians. They were trying to poison the whole church. They were barnacles. And do you remember what we discovered about barnacles? Barnacles are never alone on the hull of a ship. They always get more barnacles. Hypocrites attract more hypocrites. Jesus actually says it this way. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. What? Hypocrites. For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte. You do evangelistic series to bring one person to Judaism. But when you bring him, you make him twice as much a son, son of what? As yourself. And they are hypocrites and they make him twice as hypocritical. Friends, hypocrisy is absolutely contagious. Hypocrisy destroys churches. And on behalf of God, I would like to ask myself and to ask everybody here. Let's stop playing game with God. Let's stop playing game with each other. Let's be ourselves. And let's be transformed into sons and daughters of the Spirit. The second thing that is really um, very dangerous about hypocrisy is, do you know that many people outside of the church, non-church goers, refer to Christians as hypocrites? And while not all Christians are hypocrites, and some, some of these people who refer to us as hypocrites, they are hypocrites. It's true that some hypocrisy in the church keeps some of those people outside of the walls of the church. And do you know what Jesus says about these people who keep other people away from him? But, woe, uh, but whoever uh, causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him or her if a milestone were hanged around his neck and he were uh, drowned into the depth of the sea. This is the good Jesus speaking. And he is giving you the same fiery sermon that he is giving in Acts chapter 5. I hate hypocrisy. I hate you when, you when you destroy the spiritual life of other people. So, The story in verse 11 tells us, and great fear came over the whole church. <laughs> no kidding. If two of us drop dead here today because of our unfaithfulness, can you imagine? The offering place passes by and uh, you, you give uh, part of uh, what you have uh, promised God you'll give and then you drop dead. What do you think the person next to you is going to do? It says here, great fear came upon the church. The fact that the church was scared means that there were others, there were other barnacles there who said, I better become a Barnabas. 
I better stop playing this hypocritical game. You know, many on this particular day had to ask this particular question. Am I a Barnabas or a Barnacle? Am I a son of the Holy Spirit or I am a son of the devil and an obstacle for the work of God? You know, friends, <clears throat> this story concludes with what happened after the barnacles were cleaned from the hull of the ship. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in the Solomon porch, yet none of the rest dared to join them. None of the rest of the hypocrites, none of the rest of those who were playing games were willing to join them. But the people esteemed them highly. Yet, pay attention to verse 14. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord. When barnacles are removed from the church, or barnacles are transformed into Barnabases, God adds new believers by thousands of them. Okay, I explained already this. Let's... Uh, conclude with this this thought friends what we study today is a very solemn warning to all of us me including God is asking us to stop playing hypocrites and to start desiring his transforming presence for real knowing that when the Holy Spirit comes he will ask us to change things in how we give in how we minister, in the time we invest in people, and also in the way we invest the money of the church. It's a solemn warning that God does not tolerate hypocrisy. And even though He may let us have our free ride on the ship, ultimately one day He is going to remove the barnacles. Because in heaven, there are going to be only Barnabases. People who are sons and daughters of the Holy Spirit. People who care about other people. People who are willing to even dip in their pockets if the need arises to supply the work of God and to advance the ship to the shores of heaven. Friends, I would like to ask you to take out of your bullet in your yellow connection card. And I would like... Uh, to go through some of the action steps that we can take at the end of this service. First, please check this one that, that uh, corresponds to you best. First, Lord help me to not become an obstacle for the advancement of the gospel. Either by growing selfish or becoming fearful that my generosity may bring me poverty. A second action step. I would like to be a son, a daughter of encouragement for the people in the circle of my influence and I'm willing to pay the price for it. And finally, I will be faithful to God, serving Him with everything He has given me. May God bless all of us in this decision making. Closing hymn, hymn 310. Stand with me and sing, please. Everybody stand with me and sing. Or 309, I'm sorry. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I daily live I surrender I surrender all I surrender I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all men on 
the second stanza only. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures are forsaken, take me Jesus, take me now. Everyone, I surrender, I surrender Surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Ladies only. Third stanza. Beautiful. Everyone now. I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Last stanza without the organ. Ter Carolyn, take a rest now. All right. All to Jesus I surrender. Now I feel the sacred flame. Oh, the joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to his name. Sing it out. I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Let's bow our heads for the benediction, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, even though sometimes we do not appreciate this type of messages. They are a wake-up call for our spirituality. And I humbly ask you, Lord, to bless me personally not to be a barnacle on the ship of development of your church and the advancement of your gospel. Amen. And I pray for everyone who prays the same prayer today here, to bless him, to bless her, to bless all of us as a church, to transform us into Barnabases, sons and daughters of the Holy Spirit who are going to transform this world and are going to permeate every single place where people need you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we humbly ask and everybody said together, Amen. Amen.